All right, Robert, we're here. It's uh, it's Verbos month. Yeah, happy Verbos. <laughs> We've got the Harmonic Oscillator model 262V and the Quantize Shift Register, or Quantizer slash Shift Register model 263V. And it's not an analog shift register. Yeah, we were... Um, Which is t- totally okay. Yeah, you know, digital, because it then says just shift yeah. register. I think you mentioned that, like, in the shifty. It's just a shift register. Yeah. Because it's digital. But we say analog. analog shift register because that's just how we... It's one of those things. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about that in a bit. I'm super excited about that one. Yeah, we'll kind of run through the harmonic oscillator. First, uh, you had this in your Eurorack days. Yep, and it was almost the same size as this. I saw <laughs> It was 3U, not 4, but and maybe slightly narrower because it had... maybe I think it might have even been the same size, even though it only had 8 mm. of the mm-hmm. harmonics as opposed to 10. But the knobs were in different places. And it also had red knobs. Yeah, because it's it got had, the red, black, and gray kind yep, of... And the real Rogan knob, not that horrible puck, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is the only thing that ruins my... It's the only reason I don't want to come over here. <laughs> <laughs> all the, the pucks, all the pucks. See? yeah i'm like at least they're not davies yeah but the, <laughs> so, but the beautiful module though i i was looking at the panel first of all it, it looks brand new yeah so and it's 10 years old but the panel is very very it matches your marf really well I and mean, then just the kind of the shade of the mm-hmm. of the metal it's really attractive it looks like a very professional module I've never seen one in real life until today, so it was pretty cool. Yeah, and there's just not as much. I mean, there's a ton of Eurac harmonic oscillator, like yeah. videos and stuff out there on the internet. And so, especially with, with both these things, I was excited that we get a chance to play with these because I've never seen the uh, quantizer slash shift register in action. Yeah, that, that, I don't like the look of that module, but we'll get into that <laughs> a little bit later. No, it's, it's great. It's just as a panel layout is kind of weird. Um, so yeah, we've got, um, I guess to kind of break down, if you haven't seen the, the, uh, Eurorack harmonic oscillator, it's pretty similar. Just like Robert mentioned, there's two more harmonics. The other one is just eight. Um, it kind of, it looks like it takes, um, there was a harmonic oscillator in the 100 series that just had a frequency knob and then 10 out single outputs. Yeah. Um, you could run those into like a mixer or... Um, gates and then kind of play those things um and where this kind of brings functionality from like the uh 296 kind of spectral processor where you're um you know scanning through these harmonics like you do scan through the frequencies and then the bringing in the the harmonics with like the sliders yeah which is similar to my experience with the 296e Mm -hmm. yeah but you move your finger up and down and and individual VCAs for them, and um, on the 200 series, there's individual outputs for each frequency on the 296, and there's individual outputs here on the um, on the harmonic oscillator. Um, the s- individual outputs uh, are not tied to the VCA that's set up for each of those, or the slider. It's just constant voltage or signal out. Um, I you know. I think it would be cool if you could somehow like have a switch or something to tie yeah. those things to it. Otherwise, like if you're looking to um, send those out throughout the system and want them to be dynamic, you're going to have to use up a lot of um, mm-hmm. uh, low pass gates Yep, to kind of get that going. But two, two ninety twos at least. <laughs> two, give, yeah. Two and a half. A, yeah. Gives you eight of the, <laughs> of the 10. Um, and then, but what, uh, what it does give you is this kind of summed output where you can get all of these harmonics into one output using the sliders, uh, the CV inputs, and then the section below, which we'll talk about in a second. I think I think that output is labeled final oh. on the, mm-hmm. the Eurorack one, but I, I might be misremembering that. Mm-hmm. But it is final on the 259, so that probably would. But yeah, it's the, the okay. sum of all of those harmonics. Mm-hmm. Um, with the VCAs in series. Yep. Yeah. And then it also has four other outputs, which is sawtooth, triangle, square, and then kind of like a spike or a pulse 
yeah. output and uh in, in uh mark's blog i think he kind of notes that it's similar to what the uh what the kind of sawtooth or spike wave is on the uh, music e- easel in the complex oscillator section um it's a pulse wave well the graphic is a pulse wave with the pulse width yeah very really, narrow. Really, very narrow yeah okay this is the spike listen to this listen so many harmonics in there but like nasally at the same time the clicks yeah and then so doing the sliders won't do anything because there are no harmonics coming out yeah we're not into yeah. that main output so that's cool so let's switch over to that main output um I, what do you think you could do with that spike wave what would you do with that Filter you know it and yeah um i had it i had a whole patch set up which i recorded maybe i'll have that be the last uh over the the yeah. outro of this thing but i had um i use a lot of these outputs and then um use different envelopes and stuff like that and different rhythms out of that so that thing just came was just a very long kind of sweeping yeah. um envelope and uh since i got my 2070 that's really like swirling that that portion around that's kind of fun um, and then it's using like the, the sawtooth wave at the same time and as well as the final. So mm-hmm. a lot going on, but it was kind of cool just to use one oscillator and get all these different sounds out of it. Um, so yeah, let's move on to the actual harmonics section. So we've got these sliders that we can, I guess we can get our like fundamental yeah. one going. And then you can just start bringing them in. Yeah, it seems to be, I mean, I feel like, you know, two harmonics at a time is pretty, kind of maybe three in there. Yeah. Um, well, it seems like when you kind of go above five, like I'm going to add the six one in, six and seven, they start to get like a bit more crunchy. Yeah. I guess it just depends on which ones you have up at one time. And these are all just overlaid each other and they're not I mean, basically they're mixed together yeah of equal i mean depending on where you have depending the slider the can, together, right you know you can be really yeah because you're controlling the amplitude with the slider them. yeah so I mean, the frequency is the same you know so that's ha- halfway on all of them and you know it's not that loud yeah but i guess we we don't have it really mixed up super high on the mixer either let's try uh fming it just to yeah let's go what let's bring up like just these three in the middle uh four five and six yeah we'll bring up four five and six just so we have a nice little sound fm some really great sounds I mean it makes great sounds anyway but pretty versatile here that was just in sine wave mode now we're in saw crunchy that's what you said earlier crunchy FM it with it 
itself. So if we output 10, and then we use the output from 1 into FM, and then turn up the FM knob. slider doesn't do anything but yeah so you get kind of just a nice simple yeah another yeah. little piece and we can go on down the line and it'll cool yeah that's huh. neat actually helps me understand the module better now <laughs> like, okay yeah I get what's happening it's like an auditory oscilloscope yeah <laughs> um so so those are the sliders and then we actually have, then you have all the CV inputs underneath them. So we could be, um, you know, running a bunch of different like random things into it and try that. So we've got like a fluctuating random voltage. We can just, you know, put it into like three. And the black CVs are basically the, the VCA control, mm -hmm. right? And they will, I mean, you can. Yeah, so you've got the slider up so the, the base is, yeah. Bring the pitch down a bit. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I like that. This is all kind of running from a. Um, these are all getting triggered, except for the flexion, fluctuating random from the easel, different pulses coming out, and also actually some CV from coming out from the. Marf as well. Transposing it by hand. So we, when we were earlier today, when Kyle and I were just playing with this, I was asking about this, but he doesn't have his 218 out. But if you have this bass pitch here, and then you plugged your 218 into that keyboard input, mm -hmm. you could transpose this, right? Because that's that that keyboard input is basically we could do it with the CV input too, but yeah, the keyboard input is kind of if you've got it matched the bass pitch matched to your 218 well regardless of what key you press on the 218 it would essentially transpose mm -hmm. this so with the 263v we could do that with any voltage source mm -hmm. to point down. yeah maybe when we switch over here we'll, we'll run a bunch of shift registers into it to... this reminds me of somebody's music That. Someone from the 90s. Oh man, I wish I could. It's like right there, and it'll come to me and I'll blurt it out later in this segment. I'm like, blah! <laughs> but it's, it's so cool to have, you know, 10 different VCAs within this thing, or, you know, like to be able to. That's a lot of kind of different sounds going on mm -hmm. with just control voltage, only one single audio output from it. That's kind of kind of neat. No real like it doesn't need to run through a, a T ninety two. Yeah. If you don't want to. Uh okay, so you looked at those sections. Sorry, that was loud. Oh, I remember it, it was air. It sounds oh. like a song on that air <laughs> album with um Cherry Blossom Girl yes, or something yeah, like that. Like one of the songs from that album. Yeah. Yep. Oh man, now I can sleep tonight. Well, I've been listening to a lot of you 90s. You gasping for air. Yeah, I was like, what is... I've been listening to a lot of this, um, these 90s electronic acts that iTunes is, or Apple Music has been playing. Mm -hmm. So I've heard... Um, air, air is 90s, but also aughts. You get the yeah. point. I've been hearing a lot of old, older, you know, Aught Tecker and Boards of Canada's in there. Um, and that song Busy Child by... You know, oh, by, yeah. Um, Chem, um, not Chemical Brothers, but... Totally spacing on anyway. Crystal method. Crystal method, yeah. yeah. I and think I always get those mixed up. I do too, but yeah. they're t so different. Um, yeah. Totally different. Mr. Wazo. But the point messing around with this, I'm like, I'm hearing all of these different hmm. sounds, which doesn't really make any sense because none of them used anything like this. <laughs> as far as we know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, some, some might have, but, you know, lots of samplers and lots of digital synths from the 90s. Mm -hmm. And this doesn't, but I guess maybe because we're getting into some of these 
um, high harmonics where the that harshness and stuff starts to mm-hmm. come in. That kind of is a low resolution mm-hmm. uh, DAC in mm-hmm. an old digital synth. That's just kind of a this came to me when <laughs> messing around with that. Wow, <laughs> how how strange. Not a, probably not exactly what Mark Verbos had in mind. When, <laughs> you want to sound like Chemical Brothers or <laughs> get the harmonic oscillator? Yeah, get the harmonic oscillator. <laughs> um, okay, so now we'll go down to the harmonic scan and spectral tilt section yeah now here's where things get really powerful and interesting yeah because you're kind of taking um ideas from like kind of sweeping the filter in a way like with a center frequency and the the width of your bandwidth that you're um, taking over kind of that stuff is applied to these harmonics so your um your center frequency let me bring this back up did we mention that there are lights underneath so under each slider, one to ten, there's a little light to indicate which harmonic, which harmonic, have, and that gets it's blank to bright based on the position of the slider for the VCA. So when Kyle moved the center and chose number four, the number four light uh, turned on. Yeah. So for folks who aren't watching the video, that might be an important detail. <laughs> True. Um, yeah. Now it's between them, so they're both a little dim. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so you've got the center frequency, and we've got the width all the way down. So it's really just focusing on one of the harmonics. That's what sounds like the 4MS spectral multiband resonator when you're sweeping that knob in the middle. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, we've got it right on six and we can hear like, you know, there is this kind of dead zone between, you know, six is very faint right yeah. now as it's moving over to like the fifth harmonic. Yeah. And also, I should note, if you turn the center all the way to the left, it goes past one. So as you can hear, yeah. there's nothing going Something on Something right lower now. than one, but not zero. <laughs> and then um, and then it goes past ten. So we're at ten right here, and then we go past it Yeah. as well. Um, and so that kind of can help in different ways. You can kind of use that as the VCA in a way, too, like... You know, if you're just adding one CV in, it's just gonna. Yeah. So when you, if you put an a, an envelope or an LFO in <laughs> regular parlance into that CV input, it, would it be like pulse width modulation where you you get nothing, and then it sweeps one to ten, or does it only? And I mean, then depending. Nothing at eleven, or. D- well, let's let's try. Yeah, that. let's try that out. You All get right. what I mean, right? Yeah. So I have like a... Is that 90s? <laughs> right? I have a, uh, a function generator that's being triggered by the MARF in a pattern, and it's just a, you know, kind of set up to be like a quick down ramp. Yeah. Um, and, and so I have it set to zero, but I have it going all the way up, so I can kind of... Yeah, the CV, and CV pod is all the way up, but the center pod is all the way down. switch the other way where I have the um, uh, the attack further up so it's going slower yeah upward and then so I think it is starting at one I don't think it's going zero and eleven well it does have like when there is no voltage it's not like one isn't like I yeah because well, there's no voltage but yeah. when you give it a, a point one volt or whatever I, I don't think it's starting at zero I think it's starting at one mm. You know what I mean? Because then if I move the center, you know, because I can change where the center frequency yeah. is. So now it's starting at two. Yeah. And now it's starting at five. So you can kind of like, that's it starting at. Yeah. Well. Yeah. That's pretty cool, by the way. <laughs> um. <laughs> So then we haven't even talked about the harmonic, um, or sorry, the width portion. So we're going to, I'll go back to this five uh, harmonic. And then the width has been all the way down, so we're just focusing on one, but as one harmonic, but as we move it up. It adds four and six. Yeah, it starts to incorporate. It kind of bounces over to four a little bit, and then. Yeah. I think that's because of oh, the, center. the precision of the center, yeah. Yeah. So now we've got three. Um, Harmonics go. Oh, oh, oh. Uh. 
And then we can use the center to scan through those three. And we can make that more narrow. So you could modulate that from, and it starts to look like some. I'm gonna put it on four, and then five, right in the middle there, like that. Mm -hmm. So I see. As I'm turning the knob, and one lights up before nine and ten do, mm -hmm. and then when I go all the way. So that. it's like maybe do we even need to go like try and get the center in between five and six? Yeah, that's what I was gonna then, yeah. Now, well, yeah, no, it kind of angles a little yeah, bit yeah. towards the lower section. It's close. Man, that, so that's fascinating. And so what's also cool is, you know, we can put it back into that, like that 11 slot or whatever, yeah. and then you can mess with the the uh, the width to kind of expand down yeah. or you could go the other way and have it so when you expand you're in, up when you're at zero or something greater less than one it does go all the way to ten when, the, when it's all the way up does it do it the other way so if you go all the way kind of yeah. doesn't right oh yeah it doesn't fascinating and then you've got the uh, spectral tilt section which um it basically kind of like shifts the frequency to either um favor more low or high and so you can kind of have things set to where um maybe you want that fundamental frequencies or you know the lower one um more prominent and then now as i use the width and uh center if i go up towards the higher we can hear it kind of we're now at like 10 yeah. 9 and 10 and actually it doesn't even go to the 10th frequency yeah, we can't even right. really hear it we if we turn up the vca you can but a, yeah a little bit a little bit the energy is kind of not there so it just kind of yeah it's an i guess easy way to like shift between the two kind of yeah. tilt you know tilts it back and forth right which is probably way more interesting to see me than and hot knobbing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so let's see. Let's get. Um, let's get like a. I'll show this portion of it that I had fun with. Um, Is if, that the morph going into the keyboard input? Uh, yeah. So okay. I'm gonna get some. Key, I'm, I'm doing air quotes keyboard input. It's not labeled keyboard. I just think of it that way because it's like the the keyboard input on the 259. Yeah. Little gray CV input. Um, so. Let's see. Here. Oh, you hear that? Those, those harmonics weren't quite coming in, but they're there. Yeah. It's cute. Is this what you're performing tomorrow night? <laughs> Not quite. Um, so I'm having the uh, some random voltage kind of step around in this sequence. And so like right now, I'll kind of turn up the... Oh yeah, increase the width. Right, yeah. So that more harmonics come in when it, the center jumps. Because you're controlling the center with CV, with the random voltage. Yeah. Yeah, quantized random voltage. So if I just had like the one up... I didn't have any of this. I'll turn this off. So you get a sense of like what the yeah the sequence is doing, but if you kind of narrow the frequencies around and bounce around with them, it's gonna. I, I think it kind of like gives it a jazzy feel yeah. because it's a those sometimes those harmonics 
within um, this like fundamental kind of like yeah, yeah. place the notes um, a little differently. Do you hear that? That super high pitched. Dee, 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 dee. Yeah, do I hear think that? it might be like a bleed or something like I, that. I kind of like it. <laughs> yeah, because I do have like. There it is. Yeah. It's a, it's a little bleed. <laughs> Cute. Very Christmassy. It's a little sine wavy way. <laughs> Yeah, so that's kind of most of what this thing can do. Like I said before, and I'll I'll we have it at the end of the show. Um, the the kind of patch that I did using all these together, or, or using more of the different outputs together, um, to hear what's going on. Do you want some volume? Yeah, give me a little volume there. I wanted to. Yeah. So I've limited the amount of control of center just to kind of have it mm -hmm. sticking more, but less than six. Kind of jumps two, three, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. You could also like. Um, I'll randomize the harmonic scan a little bit. Yeah, randomize the width, the width, the width so yeah. like it can bring a little bit some. That that's that Boards of Canada kind of waver, wavering thing that I was talking about earlier. 